This over here is the Oppenheimer build that we did, or what's left of it. And the motherboard we used there was the WRX80 Sage Wi-Fi. Now we have a new motherboard, the Sage SE Wi-Fi 2. And this motherboard will unleash the full power of the 64 core Threadripper CPU because we have unlimited power. So let's see how far we can push the Threadripper. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. Now, I hope I can complete this uh, video before the new Threadripper lineup comes out. But first, we need to tear down this PC. So the PC is back down and I have these two motherboards side by side. I have the version one on the left and version two on the right. And honestly, looking at them, I really can't find any differences. The only two differences that I can see are these heat sinks on here. There is a little chrome element on the top of the version two and this heat sink of the chipset. So the fan will blow through there and then through underneath this chrome element, whereas in here it would already come out. So they're pushing the airflow to the PCIe lanes and kind of cooling that as well, more like towards that way with this fan design in there. Let me know if you can see any other differences, but now let's build uh, the new PC. So now we've got the test setup uh, done. So what is going on in here and what parts are we using? Firstly, you know, you know the motherboard already, WRX80 Sage Wi-Fi 2. We've got 256 gigabytes of Team Group T Create Classic RAM. There's eight sticks of this. It's pretty cool. We've got Team Group Cardia Z440 as the OS drive, which is the same as we had on the Oppenheimer build. Because we're not actually doing GPU benchmarks, I just use something that's cool and quiet, which is the Noctua and Asus RTX 40. 80. To be honest, any GPU will do here, but because it doesn't have integrated graphics on the CPU, we're just going to use any GPU, and this is a pretty cool GPU to use. Very importantly, you need enough power and good power for this, and for that we're using the Seasonic PX1600 Prime power supply, which is a 1600 watt power supply. It's got enough juice to you know, power all of this and a lot more. I've got the 600 watt power cable, just a single power cable to actually do the GPU as well, which is pretty cool. The big, very important thing to actually give us this extra performance, the cooler. This is the NMAX Liquitech 2 TR4 edition. So basically this has got a massive, massive contact area to the CPU. It covers the whole IHS of the CPU and that's why we can keep the whole CPU cooled down. Now, if you just use the normal cooler, it wouldn't be as good and the air coolers would be actually much better like the Noctua NHU14S but the TR4 or like the big Threadrippers which have a big plate underneath, it will be much better than just an AIO 360 millimeter cooler because the contact area is much bigger on this one. But this this is takes it to another level and I'll show you now what's going on. So basically we're in Windows right now. If we go to the task manager, you can see everything that's going on. We've got the Threadripper 5995WX, 64 cores, 128 threads, as you can see going on, 256 of RAM, we've got a 4080 as the GPU there. I've already got the hardware info open. So basically, if we are going to Cinebench right now, and if we do a single test, then what we can see over here is that our core clock speeds are roughly about 3.4, 3.1 actually. It goes down and we're using about 285 watts maximum package power there. It was 69 thousand points i think we can get about 70 70 something thousand points let's do it one more time let's see what's going on 285 and as you can see 72,000 points that's like the standard kind of score that you get on the 5995 wx but because this motherboard allows you to 
overclock or extend the power limit because the TDP for this CPU is 280 watts and we actually pulled slightly more 285 and that's what you would see on the previous version but what we can do is open Ryzen Master which on the previous motherboard wouldn't just do anything and you know nothing would happen there but now we have a few things that we can do. We're going to press OK because we're going to say, yes, we want to uh, extend some of these power limits and things. Basically, what I have done here is set different profiles up so we can see what we can do. There is the PBO and auto OC, auto overclocking, which I tried and I didn't get as good of a result as when just going with a PBO. And PBO you can just enable without resetting the computer or writing any of the values in BIOS, which is just really, really good. So basically what we have here is the PPT, TDC and EDC and if you hover over it there is the maximum value that you can set maximum 1000 this is maximum 380 and the maximum for this is 400 which in my case I just set them all to maximum now this is not kind of like manual overclocking and you know setting the voltages for everything but if I put this PBO on now precision boost overdrive we're going to apply this profile and let me show you what happens we're going to start this now and have a look at this package power now not 285 anymore four hundred and sixty five and we got eighty seven thousand points and our cpu was still sixty point five degrees so with this one click we just increased our multi-core performance by twenty one percent which is absolutely insane now the interesting thing is if i put on the 10 minute throttle test and keep the cpu just absolutely pegging it all we can see is we're pulling four hundred and sixty five watts from the socket now and look at the CPU temperatures here. So this is the CPU die here, 61 degrees. And if you look at the core clock speeds, we're boosting to 3.9 all core, as you can see. So almost four gigahertz on all core boost rather than 3.1. So extra 0.9 gigahertz. And as you can see, our CPU package temperature is still so so good in this room i have 25.5 degrees right now and look at our package temperature there's two minutes in we're 65 degrees and we're pulling 465 watts from the socket and it still maintains the almost four gigahertz clock speeds look 3992 in most of them some of the cores go 4.5 so if you're wondering if this cooler is able to keep up with this absolutely it can and this is not even the limit of this this can handle like twice as much if you haven't seen the intel 900 watts uh, you know power that we pulled on this same cooler then go check it out when we push the xeon to 900 watts as you can see on this thread ripper it is super super nice 67 degrees two minutes in now that's pretty cool. Oh, and we were doing Windows updates in the background as well. Well, that's great. Now there's lots of other things that you can do in this Ryzen Master as well. But as a creator, I don't think overclocking to absolute limit is what we want to do. If you want to know if we just by one click add and get more performance out from a system, then this is a great option now. So if you are building a Ryzen Threadripper Pro like platform, which actually wasn't overclockable at first but now suddenly is then i highly recommend buy the second version of this motherboard just because it will give you cpu extra 20 plus percent and if you want to click it overclock it even more i can easily tell you that you could overclock it to like 100,000 points in cinebench r23 no problem with this aio because there's just so much more thermal headroom as you can see like pegging it with all of the cores 465 watts were like less than 70 degrees on the cpu which is just absolutely amazing especially if your room temperature is 26.7 degrees as you can see it's quite warm but hey if this system is a bit uh, expensive for you and you're a creator you're wondering and um, what are some of the more affordable options that we can build then check out the build guides in the description below there are builds there for less than thousand dollars and then all the way up to high end as well so whatever your budget is there's a build down there i'll explain all the upgrades and downgrades there and this is the latest versions available they're always linked to the latest down in those links so go check them out and i'll see you in the comment section below bye bye